Hello and welcome to another lived quality conversation. And today I'm privileged and honored to host Paula again. Um, uh, I know Paula, she's a good friend of mine. Uh, she is a person who holds many capacities. She's a parent, uh, she's a professional project manager. She's also a carpenter and she's a very creative person. Uh, so Paula, welcome to Lift Quality Podcast. Thank you and thank you for having me again. Yes, uh, so uh, as it's tradition, I will, uh, I'm curious, you know, what have you been up to? What's on your mind? What's alive for you? And how have you been? Um, I've been well. What's, what's on my mind is always the same thing. How do I find time to do my timber work? Always the same, Clayton, always the same. So, but I do have a work life. So that's been taking up some time. So that's all coming back online after a few weeks of slowness. So I'm just trying to gear myself back into work headspace. Hmm. Yeah, so more organizing your work and trying to plan and trying to get uh, your, try to find, to create more time for your creativity and your passion to flourish. That's what I'm hearing. Yes. Yes, that is exactly right. And I think, I think for me, I'm becoming more aware that that part of me is becoming more and more dominant, which I'm actually happy about, because I find myself, any spare time, I'm doing research on what I love and what I want to do, dreaming, getting some good deals, and, you know. So it's it's definitely made, making my time more productive. Yeah, so speaking of creativity, so um, I find that, like for myself, when when I get engaged in uh, like a cre creative activity, uh, I learn I learn from it, but it also gives me the insight to to what else I can be doing, right? So it opens uh, like a whole new world opens up to me. Like for example, uh, before I started the, the podcasting, I I used to do a lot of blogging, like writing blog posts. And so eventually, since it was still, you know, an exploration of thoughts, I've ended up in a space where by now I am, instead of synthesizing them, I'm sort of like just exploring them live, you know, firsthand. Uh, but while I was doing that, I also developed interests in, you know, like art, music, and all these other creative endeavors. And I find that even it, it's like they are less daunting to try, right? Like uh, uh, growing up, you're told yeah. uh, there's a general perception that, you know, <laughs> the society creates that you need to be, like you think about art and people will tell you about the successful artists, you know, Picasso, right? It's like they will find you trying to paint and they're like, what, are you becoming the yeah. next Picasso? <laughs> and, and I'll go like, no, no, but I think I need mm. to bring alive the Picasso in me, right? Like I need to to animate the spirit of Picasso that I have of me so that I can be my own Picasso. Like, let, let me allow that mm. Picasso in me live a little bit. Yeah, so I find that it opens yeah. up more avenues for that creativity to, to come out. And it comes with a confidence of, uh, of doing that. Um, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on that? And uh, what does that, you know, bring to mind for you? Um, I think, I think being in the space that allows you to even try to be creative is an achievement in itself. Because we're so used to suppressing that because the jobs that are worth doing are office jobs, you know, lawyer, you've got to be a doctor, all the stock standard jobs. And something that creativity is looked down upon until you're very successful. So the Picasso kind of analogy, until you're Picasso, no one really sees what you're doing as value. So for me, I think anytime I find someone who's willing to let, to tap into their creativity, I am actually excited for them because one, it's overwhelming. Two, it's uncharted territory, even for you, because you're like, you have this imposter syndrome going on, you're like, I'm trying this, but is it really for me? Should I be doing it? Shouldn't I be doing something else? Like, what will people think? 
that kind of scenario. So I guess being creative or allowing that I'm creative has allowed me to be comfortable in that space of not knowing. And in that discomfort, it's allowed me to enter that space often. And even if parts of me still say, oh, well, you're faking it, but I'm like, no, 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 it still feels good. So I'm going to stay here and try and, and be in this space. But the other side to it is it can be overwhelming because all of a sudden you've taken on something else. You're like, do I really have time for all the things I want to do and all the things I've started exploring? And there's, you could actually get sucked into that part and then you stop out of fear or you could just have fun and go with it. So I think any time that creativity is involved, I think I've, I've learned to have a an open mind towards that space, whatever it is, whether for you it's writing, for you it's talking to people. For me now, Claire, any moment I'm awake and I'm idle and I need to just downtime on my phone, I'll be looking up something to do with like a project I can do or something I can copy. And it's very satisfying, definitely satisfying. And it makes it makes everything else well, how do I put it? It makes it feel like everything has its place. Yes, I have a time when I have to do my day job. I have a time when I have to look after my children. I have a time when I have to do laundry. But then I also have a time where I can express myself and it's only me and my expression. So I'm all for it, Clayton. Write away, review away, talk away. It's all good. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, there's a few things I, I want to play with there that you've you know, I uh, talked about and um, mm. yeah, you know, the, 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 the creating that space, you know, finding your, your self in that space where you can be creative, it takes, it takes, you know, work, you know, like we spoke before, uh, you have, it's sort of like something you have to earn. It's not going to be given to you. Like you, you have to seek it. You have to, overcome challenges intention yeah you know develop an intention mm. and uh come to a place whereby you discover it and you're doing this all for yourself like we we recently had a, a conversation with uh wana mm. about the pursuit of purpose and it's very much similar it's like you before you can even get the vision of where you're going you have to climb up the peak of the mountain otherwise when you're below that peak you can't see like you have to earn the right to be in a place where you can see. And uh, like once you get there, then you can even now start seeing clearly, but that doesn't mean the job is done. You haven't arrived yet. Like there is, you, you, you see the horizon and now you have to chase the horizon and you can now see the obstacles a bit better, but now you know what you have to do. Like you're not going to, it's not just going to happen on its own. And like you said, it becomes, you know, overwhelming because your life hasn't stopped, right? <laughs> You still have all these things you're doing. You're still being a parent. Yeah. You still have, uh, you know, your mortgage to pay. You mm -hmm. still have, you know, uh, your friends to take care of. You have the, you have the extended family as well. You know, they're looking up to you and they're, they're counting on you. So you have all these things that you have to hold in balance mm -hmm. and still find, uh, you know, time and resources to explore that ever you know, opening uh, excitement that is coming at you. And it can't be too much. Like if you, if you like really knew all the details uh, of it, you may even hesitate and go like, ah, oh, do I really want to do this? Is this something I want to take on? Um, but I think yeah. in, in the process of uh, when you, when you, you, you do it long enough to the point that uh, some of the benefits of doing it start to come to you and you start to feel you, you start to develop you build a history that you can rely on it's like there's now tangible evidence that you know for example you know using your example of um your journey of carpentry right like there was a time when you used to say oh i i i think i want to become a carpenter right then there was a time when you're saying i'm trying i'm trying to be a carpenter right and now you've, you've come to a place where by like, mm. no, 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 I am a carpenter. Actually, I know that I am. It's like, 
there's so much evidence in your yes. life that you've and, and you've done enough yes. of it that it's now uh like it, it, you've built that wave and that wave is now the one that's propelling you forward and in the in the process uh you're opening mm-hmm. yourself up to more things and you you're starting to feel that satisfaction from from doing it uh it's it's making it's it's sort of like the the source of the joy and the meaning in your life because like like you said every opportunity of time uh you 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 you're trying to find and and you, you notice that you you're not complaining about all the other things you have to do <laughs> it's like you know you have to do them so you yeah. you're not challenging that fact but mm. more you you're now becoming more creative mm. about okay yeah yeah okay life still has to go to go on but maybe i can find a cut gap here and then i'll be able to fix a bit of my thing maybe i'll i'll still make a little bit of a progress on yeah. that i'll make a little progress here and it's it's like in the process it's um it's like you're also becoming creative with the creation of the time uh so that you can you can have that space to express yourself yeah um yeah yeah you know i think you, the different time the different places you are in life you can view your time as either one you have to get through and it's such a drag or one that's not enough and you just want to make more and more of that but you, you know it's only finite so i think i definitely jumped into that space where i still have the same amount of hours as everyone else but i've learned to be more efficient in that time to get what i want out of it and i actually find myself wishing people could donate their time to me time they want to sleep or do nothing with i wish that was an option i would bank it because then i'll just pull it out and just knock myself out but yeah it's 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 a fascinating way to be when you're open to however your creativity expresses some people it's cooking some people it's it's reading books i don't care how how it happens but i think it's a it's a wonderful thing when you find that time is not there to work against you mm. time is there to serve you to do what it is you love and to help you get more out of of this this experience of of life and then time just doesn't feel like it's a painful thing to withstand anymore and like i'm not i'm not always i wish this would end there's those days are not mine anymore where i i want it to finish no the day should just keep going 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 mm yeah no that's uh that's beautiful it's, it it really deeply resonates with me because oh, you know like you mentioned there you all of a sudden you're following you're starting to notice the places you've been wasting right like you start to see those opportunities and so you want to improve mm. the efficiency you want to you want to be more excellent right like you you're raising up to having a certain standard that you're maintaining through all the things that you're doing and like you 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 touched on there mm. it's like you stop reacting to to the time and start to sort of like learn to work with it it's like you don't you don't want to end mm-hmm. that that thing of dreading uh the thing you're doing and going like oh my god when will it end i can't i can't i can't wait for this to end or i really need to get through this uh you find that you are mm-hmm. you are now you know like that has shifted it's more like uh no if i if i could do this a bit more i would uh it's just that maybe sometimes uh other important things come up right and and you have to attend to them uh but it's not it's it's, it's sort of like becoming a, yeah a, a matter of prioritization right yeah yeah um you know i find that i don't know it's such a weird way we're brought up thinking about time one you don't realize that you've got only a few years on this earth and then too you don't realize that even when you have work time as much as you're being paid 
for that time. It's still yours. Like how you use it during those productive hours, it's still yours to to kind of break apart and, and see how to make it more efficient. And I think understanding the construct of time and how it relates to you and how it can serve you or not serve you is very important. And if you make a decision to waste time and it's a conscious decision, today I'm just going to sit, I'm going to just chill, I'm not doing anything. I think that there is power in that. If you get your day and you say, you know, today I'm going to do all these things, I'm going to try and do all of this, at the end of the day I'll be tired, but I'll be fulfilled. Again, that's valid. But the beauty of being on this side of, of reality and, and philosophy is you start to see how much little time you have. Like, it's not there. It's not, it's not going to just keep giving you if you're doing nothing with it. You get to a point where you're just going downhill because you've not used the hours you have. And you don't even notice it until you're much older or you're like, what did I do with my time? Does that make sense? Like, no, that that makes. You sit back sense. and yeah. you know you hear it so so often. I wish I had, yeah, I wish I had done more of this, and I wish I'd done more of that. But yeah, I'm at the stage where I do not want to be that person. Yeah. I want to say I had this much time, and even though I wasn't as productive as I could have been, I chose to just sit on some days. And, and I think that's... But to that's, be the driver uh, behind my time. Yes. The choice, the, the intentionality, right? Mm. Yeah. And, 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 mm. and, and you, you, you've touched it there. It's like you... It's not like you get more time, right? Like, it's the same time. Uh, I, 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 was, uh, I don't remember who I was talking to recently, but we're asking, you know, you look at the people, what is it, the, the Pareto distribution... That's what they call it, the, the 80-20. It's like they say 20% uh, of the work in like I know a big organization is, you know, I mean, 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people, right? Uh, and you have like, even when you look yeah. at uh, wealth distribution, it's like 20% of, <laughs> of people in the world own 80% of the wealth, right? And yeah, yeah. and. Mm. Then you ask, we're all getting the same 24 hours. How is, how are they, how is Elon Musk doing all the things he does, right? Like, how is he getting all those things done? And for me, it feels like he has, you know, refined his, you know, process or whatever. He's the model he's using to approach, you know, doing life to a point that it's able to hold that much. Right? Like he's able to do that much within the same 24 hours that we're all getting. Mm -hmm. And um, and this reminds me of, uh, you know, like we spoke about uh, you, last time we spoke about work and I was telling you, I have to I have to organize my day. right? And part of it is because I'm, I'm also mm -hmm. trying to be efficient. right? I'm trying to to see what's the most I can take out of it. Uh, is it are the things that are happening? things that I intend for them to actually be there in that day, because otherwise it, you're going to be losing time, that, that limited time, to things you don't want to lose it to. And they are there. Mm. Like they always come and they always mm -hmm. get us. And, and <laughs> especially when we're not aware yeah. of them, right? But at least when you try, uh, like you're saying, like if I'm, if I'm going to mm. intentionally sit down and uh just relax, uh, then that's okay. It's like it's not it's not time wasting, as you know, would have been told uh, back home when we were growing up. It's more rather in, in intentional relaxation, right? And and so bringing all yeah. these mm -hmm. this this way of thinking into our languages, I've, I'm finding that quite uh, very helpful, especially like even when you're raising children. Um, I was talking to uh, Delvin the other day, telling him, look, you have to manage your entertainment, right? Like, it's, it's not like you get to entertain yourself endlessly. You have things to do, right? Like, do, do, do your chores, <laughs> yeah. finish them, yeah. 
And once you know, like, there's nothing to do, you can even consult, like, you know, consult your parents and find out if you have addressed everything mm. you need to address. And once you know, like, your checklist is done, there's nothing waiting on you, then you can entertain yourself as much as you want. Like, mm. you, you, you will not be interrupted mm -hmm. in your entertainment if you address all the things that still require your attention and your participation. However, yes. if you yeah, if, if you try to mm -hmm. you try to entertain yourself before, then definitely your entertainment is going to be interrupted, and you will also not enjoy that entertainment. So it's like it will it will go from something that would be joyous to something that's now suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I find it's it's really hard to sometimes I struggle with translating some of those concepts to the kids because when you think that well for me it's taken me um it's taken me a good portion of my adult life to get here and to get to this mental state and trying to pass that wisdom down to a kid is is really hard sometimes they get it other times they don't because they're built to seek gratification first they don't know how to delay it and, you know, I hear you talking about how you're dealing with delving in that space. And I can remember when I was dealing with the same situation with Sophia, trying to say, do the things first, even if you don't want to do them. And then you'll have all the time in the world. Now she's older. She's actually worked out. If I want to have a good life and a good time and entertainment, I need to ask these people what they need done before I can actually start thinking what I want to do. So she comes up and she's like, Mommy, is there anything you want me to do? Have you done your uniform? Yes. Have you done your homework? Yes. Has Amara showered? No. Have you found uniform for tomorrow? No. Have you had dinner? Yes. Can you do the ones that are no? She'll do them. Come back. Do you need help? Yeah. Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do that? No complaint whatsoever. She'll do it all. Mommy, I'm done. Are you finished? And do you need help with anything? Now I start to feel guilty. I'm like, actually, no, you've done too much. Just go and chill. And Ismail will come through and he'll ask checklist. She's done it all. I'm like, no, nothing else from you. If you give me a cup of tea, I won't bother you the rest of the evening. And then she has all this time to herself. But I must admit, it was a good realization for us when we noticed she picked it up. That if she presents herself to all the things she doesn't want to do, they finish. And then she has time to do everything else. I'm like, good. Something is working in that regard. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Although now I'm, now I'm starting to, not although, now I'm starting to think. I want to teach her to be, not to be linear, to be open. You know, like, yes, for her entertainment right now is sitting and looking at TikTok. And, and just browsing. But now I want her to start looking at TikTok and seeing one, it's, it's taking valuable time. So choose to engage in it, but know that you have other things you could do. Two, if you're looking at TikToks, what else can you get out of it that could change your life? If it's makeup, why don't you learn to do makeup and then start it as a little side hustle? If, if it's telling you about um, musicians, why don't you actually stop and then go and, and do a bit more research so you know a bit more about the people you're watching and why you should or shouldn't watch them? Because I think we're getting into that age where it's not good enough to just be influenced by what you see. You know, and, and when we started having this conversation, because the little girls now are all doing skincare and makeup and all of that, and then I said, you need to look at these things and just think past what you're seeing. And you know what I found interesting later? She'd actually, in her TikToks, done a bit of research on the age limit for some skincare products. <clears throat> so before they were selling them to everyone. Because no, in Australia, the age limit is this to go into this shop. You can't do, buy that. You can't buy that. In America, it's this. I'm like, oh. You are paying attention. You're not just being mindless with your entertainment. I'm like, these people are going to be making money, some of them, at your expense. 
So if you're not going to make money, learn something and go beyond what it is they're showing you. So I'm look, I look at her and I'm, I'm forced to see that in this tech age, we can't just pass on the same information our parents gave us for that to be enough. You know, like she'll come to me and she'll say, Mommy, you do so many things. You do too much. And I'm like, what do you mean by do too much? You you go to work, you take care of us, you take us to activities, you're always building, you're always creating something. I'm like, okay, do you think do too much is as a bad thing you need to stop? Or do you think too much as in, wow, you do too much? And she goes, the other one, wow, you do too much. And I'm like, okay. I'm, somehow I'm translating appreciation to her for how much goes into a single day, for how I use my time just not for me. And I'm trying to say to her, you know what, this is going to be life. This is going to be you very soon. And I need you to be able to see that you have to work hard, you have to enjoy your life, but you also have to find space for you. You as Sophia, you have to be comfortable in your own skin, in your own different expressions. She's like, mommy, you know what? You're right. You're always doing something. I wonder what that could be for me. And I'm like, you're good at art. She's like, yeah, okay. But she's still not drawing. She's still not getting there. But I'm just so glad that I get to consciously pass on some of these things I've learned over many, many years. But I'm finding ways to break it down so that my children don't have to be exactly like I was starting from zero. Yeah, and and wow, it's uh, it's really really impressive to hear the progress that you're making and and how you're able to track it and see um how you you're coming across and how you're influencing her, right? Mm. Um, what I like the most about that is um, you know, it's it's challenging, especially as a parent, when you have to teach, to even teach, right? Like, because when you sign up to be a parent, you're not signing up to be a teacher. <laughs> you, you don't come equipped with those skills, right? Mm. <laughs> but but you're in a situation where you require, like that's one of the services you're required to deliver. And and, mm. and some, of, some of these lessons, it's so interesting because they don't tell you this. It's like, for example, you're teaching your child how to brush teeth, right? Like teaching Serena how to brush teeth. It's like, we've been at this for like what? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's maybe three years or so. It's like, when is it ending? It's like, no, no, this is an everyday thing. And you, you will teach this until it's learned. And everyone learns at a different pace and everyone, mm -hmm. you know. But if they, if they told you like it's going to take maybe... 1,500 lessons for you to teach a child how to brush teeth. Do you still want to have a child? You may hesitate. You go like, oh, wait, just to brush teeth? I have to give 1,500 <laughs> lessons? Like, yeah, on repeat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then you, and, and that's just brushing teeth. It's like, you know, you have to teach them the basics. Then you have to teach them life. Then you have to teach them, like you're teaching them time management. It's mm. like, yeah, it's like, you know, this is why, like, you know, speaking personally, like, this is why I'm, I'm inspired to even call people and, and we have these kinds of conversations because there's a lot of wisdom in the things we do, the everyday mm -hmm. things, the mundane things, that goes unnoticed. Like, it gets swept under the rug. And even us ourselves, we ignore it. And you mm -hmm. find someone telling you how you know they they really undermine themselves they 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 don't look at how capable they are but simply because they're undermining all the cool things they're currently doing mm -hmm. uh, under the circumstances which are right before them but they, they what yeah. is it uh, the, the bible verse is like they they see but they're blind right <laughs> that mm. kind of thing right like people who are seeing but they're still blind and i think a lot of us be blinded in this way. And I think that, you know, what you're talking about, like breaking things down, like really paying attention and following uh, 
what's what's going on like even for example like for Sophia within her own entertainment because she's really bringing doing it with intention and really paying attention she's starting like those opportunities are starting to tickle her creativity right mm. and and all of a sudden something new is starting to be born and this was supposed to just be let's say mm. nothing is expected to come of this yeah. but like still things start to come up right mm-hmm. and and you model it in such a way i i like to use this joke of parents we we really are good at seeing the things uh that our bad habits emerge in our children it's like when we see that it really drives us nuts like yes. you need to stomp it down it's like i know that thing i've lived with it a yes. long time mm. and now it's passing on to you i did that's not one of the things i was trying to pass on right mm. but the children for them they are not learning what you're telling them they are learning to be you like they are watching all of you everything you do so so yeah. the good the bad because they haven't yet developed that that moral lens that moral capacity yes. it's mm-hmm. still it's still a an idea for them it's like oh they say this they say this but they don't really know so in the meantime they just consume everything so they can't filter for themselves mm. and then when 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 they are doing it when they are when they are acting out in real life for them they believe everything they take from their parents is good and then <laughs> they don't know that even the parents there are things they do that the parents would not still fighting <laughs> like, if you do those. <laughs> yeah? So like, yeah no 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 I, that, that one you don't do but but you you do it right you know you you have all these fights but you you did this like Mm. and then maybe sometimes you play the adult cards like ah oh, I'm an adult right I am allowed <laughs> to do whatever I want but you yeah. you're not allowed but actually nice. if mm. I if I could manage myself if I could stop myself from doing it I would it's just that mm. I don't know how right? that's so true and so it's yeah mm. you said something that's pretty key it's you know we forget that we are teaching by observation and the more they watch what you're doing without fail that's what's going to come out and i i think allowing myself to be in this space where i'm willing to learn and be wiser is has shown me that because how i speak is how they speak how i roll my eyes is how mara rolls her eyes and now i'm like okay so what do i want her to learn from me and i keep saying to them just come and watch what i'm doing and go away check in every so often don't just sit there as if this doesn't concern you because believe me it does because my absence from you means something what i'm doing will mean something to you when it's in your space so just come and watch me ask me if you can help me and you know sophia especially initially was like oh mommy what are you doing but now she'll come and say where are you going to put that But why didn't you do it like this? Occasionally she was like, why didn't you do it like this? I'm like, because of this and this and that and because this and this. Like, hmm, okay. And I'm like, can you hold it and make it firm and then do this? Good. Okay. No interest whatsoever. But I'm 100% sure she's learning work ethic. I am 100% confident that when she looks at me working, she'll go, you know what? My mom's always been hardworking. My mom never just sat there and and did nothing. And now those are lessons I'm willing to pass subconsciously to them. And those are model activities I can 100% say, "Yep, go for it." Then the others I don't like, I'm like, "Ooh, don't catch me doing it." Because it's so easy to let your guard down and just do something and then when they do it, it it really irks you. You're like, "Why did she speak like that?" or the tone where did that tone of voice come come from and then you check yourself and you're like mm, that was me and you're like mm, no nah, not not what i intended so it's it's funny how we came from talking about creativity to time to children but it, it's just reflective of life you really can't pull one thing out and have one thing as stand alone because these things all connect to each other and awareness in all of them is really required not just eyes on one this on on this thing here and 
blinded to everything else no way yeah you know you you remind me of uh, that conversation with uh faith uh, uh, where she brought up a lot about awareness and mm-hmm. um i think it's it, it, it's in, it's important you know like the awareness like to for me it, it's like the intentionality mm. i i'm a strong believer in intentionality like even holding a space uh for other people's intentionality right like believing their truth and and uh allowing their reality to become true mm. uh it takes a great deal it takes a great deal because like uh in the in the process of like to even do that for someone else it means it's something you've experienced it's something that it's a gift that has been given to you before mm. um and and all these gifts especially like the the parenting ones that we're trying to pass on you you mentioned before like you, you're always reflecting what was given to you like you know when you're growing up and then now you know you have to pass on something it's like it's implicit in you this is this is uh, I, i don't like to use this term but i can't find a better one but this is a debt you have to pay yes <laughs> i don't mm. think it's really a debt but i can't characterize it a different it, way it truly really yeah. is because um, when but we have you yeah. yeah, 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 saying because when uh when you 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 have when, when you're growing up like there's a lot of choices that you're not making on the things you're getting right like if you had <laughs> if you had to choose yeah the debt you're going to pay uh maybe you choose different right like but so it's a, it's a bit of a, a, a a concept which I, i'm struggling with i'm yet to find a good way to characterize it but essentially it, it, we have to pay it forward but we have to pass on um, mm. the gifts that we've managed to cultivate along the way mm. to those who are going to carry them forward and and hopefully it's those that uh, we know the most uh, those who are around us uh, most of the time and those we wish the things for Yeah. Mm. But I actually believe it's a debt because when you know better you should do better. And if you're in a situation where like where you've had the privilege of being brought up by parents, two parents, that is a privilege in itself. What they've taught you they've either taught you subconsciously or by choice. And I strongly believe that there's a time in life where you choose what you will keep with that they've taught you what you'll change what you 100% cut off and that is a a fundamental position to hold as an adult when you fail to recognize that and you keep defaulting to blaming your parents and failing to see that you're an adult making a decision there are problems there and anyone that has parented knows that even knowing what it is that your child needs is hard enough but i feel so proud and so honored to be in that position to know what is wrong and right for me and what is wrong and right for me to pass on and then to choose what i have to pass on even if it wasn't implicitly given to me but it's something i've learned to pass on so i think it is a debt and i think it's a debt that doesn't only apply to your children it's a debt that should apply to your circle of influence and and in that influence in this little bit and this one you obviously will influence the wider lot because somehow that lesson goes out like all my life i think of the people who meant something to me like you think you might be saying you might have the same thing you have this particular auntie that comes to mind because she taught you something like or she gave you something or an uncle said something to you that has stayed with you for life and it's like a default setting that gets activated in particular situations and i value that and one of my biggest biggest things that i want to a legacy i would want to leave is to know that my nieces and nephew go you remember when auntie paula used to do this and then this and this and this that sweet memory associated with you when they were little they can change when they're older but that that innocent soul having this beautiful memory of you that i love and if anything i want to i want to hold that place in their entire lives as long as it's a child i know 
I want them to have something small that they, in their brain, you can't change because it's antipolar or something like that. And I think, I think for me, knowing that, I choose what it is I'm going to give. I choose what that one thing I want them to remember, whether it's a kindness, whether it's it's teasing, whether it's a little treat, whether it's it's a lesson, depending on their age. So I find being an intentional parent is is hard work, but it's so worth it. So worth it. Obviously, you get things wrong along yeah. the way, but it's a debt you have to repay. You really have to treat it as a debt. Yes. No, I, I agree. I think, uh, you know, like you've shared there, like if you've got that privilege, but I don't think it's just about even getting the privilege. It's just... Uh, you know, the virtue of the fact that you happen to have lived a life. I, I, in the in the discussion I had, uh, in the conversation I had with Faith, um, I think we talked slightly about uh, wisdom, and and I was telling her the the way I sort of try to define, like my expectation for wisdom is a bit broader than what is uh, what is used because the the way I define it is like if you whatever has found a way to exist contains a certain wisdom right and the wisdom can can you know be positive it may even be negative but there's you need wisdom to act and mm-hmm. whichever direction you're going to go it's the wisdom you're working with and so we still, of course, have to filter it and uh, refine it and, and, and pick out that which will uh, drive us towards, uh, mm-hmm. you know, w- the direction we need to go. But by the mere fact of existence, there's, there's wisdom there. So it means uh, that that wisdom needs to be honed in some way. And it's mm-hmm. unique. It's unique mm-hmm. to that very instance. It's not... It's not going to be the same. You cannot duplicate it. And yes. we've done a lot of research on twins, hoping mm. to find that yeah. <laughs> that they are going to be the same. In yeah, and they find like no, actually they are something they're still very very largely different. Mm. And and I think knowing that it drives you towards accepting because like we say this like a lot uh, w- w- when you reach a certain age you start to you, you're touching on it before like you start to look back on your on your parenting the parenting you received and yeah. then you can now start to sort of like analyze it and 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 have and have your opinions about which parts you you appreciate which mm-hmm. parts you kind of like yeah maybe not that part and which parts you know you you know you can even if you've maintained a good relationship with the parents you can and 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 you're lucky to still have them with you you can still influence them right like you can talk about these things yeah um, but it takes it takes that maturity to to get to that level where you can accept the responsibility and start to to see the the people who parented you as just people who are going through life and they did the best that they could yeah. at the time with whatever they had, right? Yeah. And, and and when you're little, when you're little, before you develop all this, uh, let's say, maturity or wisdom or way of understanding, mm. you can you can have uh, unrealistic ex- expectations, and you kind of like have all these unverified assumptions about them. It's like, but they're adults; they should yeah. do. This. Yeah. Why did they not do this for me? How come, you know, like yeah. all those, all those uh, uh, unbounded questions and unverified assumptions, like, but, but they're just people, right? Like, yeah. you are put in their situation of life at the time and had to do what they did, you mm. may find that it may not turn out the same way it turned out for you, right? And so yeah. that legacy, uh, we have the responsibility to shape it, right? Like, we have uh we exp- it's not even it's like it's like it's you're, you're creating the legacy whether you whether you're doing it with intention or not <laughs> like the legacy is there and yeah. so you have you could you 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 could you could you you could try to influence what it looks like uh but it will be there 
and it will look a certain way. Now, the mm. choice is yours whether you want to have a say in that. Yeah. Or not. Or just, you. <laughs> yeah, or just keep going. It's it's interesting because I meet people who still hold a grudge against their parents. Or, funny, my mother hadn't done this. My mother is so horrible she did this. My dad did this. And instantly, I'm like, so as an adult, you haven't yet worked out that they were also faking it. They were just doing the best they could. So right now, you don't get to blame them because you're an adult. You could make a different decision. You've chosen not to. You're holding on to that thing that you don't have to carry. You can let go. But worse still, you're still blaming them while parenting your own children and thinking the outcome will be different. Like, that blows my mind. I'm like, hmm... Nah, there's an age where you stop blaming your parents and you say, now nah, I'm going to man up, woman up, and make my own choices. And oh my goodness, the suffering is real because you actually start to see where people fall apart. And it's it's in that distinction of saying, yes, that's what was done to me, but how am I moving forward? Am I going to carry it or am, or am I going to drop it and move on and then see different for myself because that's what I choose? But then there's some people you can't have such a conversation with because they're this closed off that all they know is what happened there. There's no view of what's going to happen next if I choose to do different. And it's it's always a sad realization that wisdom doesn't go to all in the ways you'd expect. It just dies when it comes to some topics. It, it doesn't follow the, the the positive opening direction it should go. Yeah. And yeah. So that that is true. Like I've experienced that uh, as well. And and I would say that you know the, the our blind spots they, they they are the same ones which you know that the scope of our vision mm. like you can only see as far as you're blind. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you if if you can try to be less blind. Maybe you may see more, but it's yeah. uh, it takes work. It's a it's a big commitment, mm. and 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 so, it, it, like in my own language, I like to say, you know, in, we have to have that uh, respect for other people's suffering <laughs> because yes. yeah, you don't know what people are dealing with, right? No, like, <laughs> no, you, you don't know, and 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 it's through it's through that suffering that we all get refined. Like even us, uh, our things that we have come to learn, like all, all the things we're talking about, they have not been free of charge. Like you, no, you didn't just wake up with it. A hundred percent. You went through. Yeah, you, you go it. through stuff. <laughs> you go through stuff and pay for it, and eventually, <laughs> and eventually you put in that shape mm. that now you live by this. Like yeah, I I I risked. You know, I tried that, I tried that, I got to the edges of this thing and I know where I need to walk. And and I'm not going beyond those boundaries because I have actually gone there and things it's not fun. Do not <laughs> turn out right. I, I, I wasted. It's not mm. fun. I wasted. I lost stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I think so. I, I yeah. Yeah, definitely honoring that suffering is is something. And, you know, I find I have to, sometimes I have to stop myself from pointing out their suffering because I work with a few people like that. And the reason I, I pull myself up from not even addressing it is I realize that that's part of their journey, that they haven't suffered enough yet to let it go. So me trying to tell them otherwise and insisting on telling them otherwise is wasting their time and mine because there is a path they have to take. It doesn't mean I'll let someone fall in a ditch. But if we've had a conversation three, four, five times and the outcome is always the same and you insist on doing what it is you've been doing, please be my guest because I cannot shortcut it for you until you're ready to go, okay. And sometimes people say to me, oh, Papa, you're so, you're so like tough and so cutthroat. Like you can still keep doing it. I'm like, yeah, but. To what avail? I've known this person for four years. And in the four years, despite telling them your job is never going to love you back, don't work, don't be here at 6.30 and live at 6.30 and think that that's a good thing. No one says thank you for the work. 
the same person, you know, you, you talk and they're having the same drama and you say to them, but that's not what you should be doing. You know, maybe don't just cut it off like this and like that. So now I'm just like, oh, okay. Are you okay though? Yeah, we good. Do you want a coffee? Yes. So oh, let's go. We'll do coffee. We'll leave all the other things because you are still attached to your misery. There is no shortcutting it until mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you're ready to put the burden down. You won't hear a thing anyone says. So for me, that's wisdom because for the longest time, I, I try to intervene to help. Doesn't work. Hmm. Hmm. No, you're, you're very spot on because the wisdom, uh, you know, tells you where to stop, where the line is, uh, and which, where the suffering will lead you. Like uh, a, a, a realization I had recently was uh, how Jesus believed in his suffering, right? Like he knew this mission he was going on. Uh, mm. Yeah, like at some point it's going to, to be the death of him. Like he knew ahead of time, right? And it did indeed play out that way. Uh, but that's be because he was wise enough to actually tell us, like, look, these guys, the, 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 the things I'm talking about, the challenge I'm bringing forth uh, is going to be so provocative that I am sure at some point the authorities will have no choice other than to just get rid of me. I, uh, and so he focused on, on, on how do I go out in style, right? Like how do I... How can I make such an impactful exit that I leave, I shape my legacy, right? And and he did, like he he really, mm. you know, shaped that final part of his life. And and by the time he got out of it, it's like, wow! Now we all look never up, forgotten. you know, <laughs> to that legacy. We we were trying to, right? We've never forgotten hey. thousands of years <laughs> ahead, right? And probably thousands of years more to come. Mm. Uh, but I think th that's that's evidence of, of what can happen if you shape your legacy, if you like really become intentional about it mm. and and own your suffering and decide to to take it a certain way. And yeah, so I think that that is all like really, really wonderful stuff. And and uh, I'm very cognizant of the time. I think we're coming up on time. Yeah, and I wanted to take a moment to like really appreciate you making this time and having this uh, difficulty conversation with me. And just before you drop off, is there something else you wanted to share, and maybe some things you wanted to talk to uh, just before we wrap up? Now I'm sure we'll have many more opportunities, so no, no, no stress on my part. Mm. All right, thanks, Paula, and I'll no, catch I... you on the next one. Have a good one. <laughs>